It's only 12.45 in the afternoon, and I'd like you to take a moment to think of all of the interactions that you've already had just today. Perhaps you said good morning to a loved one, or greeted a fellow student when you got here. It doesn't matter who it was with or where it was, but that behavior in that context was reinforced because that other person probably said hi back to you. We use speech every day for these simple exchanges, and we take that ability for granted. It's been approximated that 50% of children diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder will never develop functional speech. And with prevalence on the rise, now one in 68, it's an issue worth talking about. Not surprisingly, these children with autism often develop what we call, quote, problem behavior. But understandably, if I can't tell you to quit it, I might bite you or push you to get you to go away. And in that context, these behaviors make sense. Now, my job as a clinician is to decrease these problem behaviors. But more importantly, my job is to increase adaptive alternatives that meet the wants and needs of that child. We call this Augmentative Alternative Communication, or AAC for short. But the options out there are limitless. From picture exchange systems to high-tech expensive devices, the decision that parents have to make is a difficult one. And during my time as a clinician, there are two questions that have really resonated with me. The first, which AAC modality is best for my child? And second, if I choose to use AAC, Will my child ever learn to speak? As an applied scientist, these two questions were very difficult for me because when I looked to the literature, there were no empirically supported answers for them. We had a multitude of AAC options out there, but we did not have the comparison studies providing evidence for one over the other. And the studies that did exist had some methodological features that questioned the validity and accuracy of those findings. So that's where my study comes in. We decided to compare AAC on equal playing fields, but the list is too long, we couldn't compare them all. So we decided to pick two popular choices. The first, picture exchange represented in blue, and second, sign language represented in green. And we compared these two AAC modalities relative to a speech-only condition represented in red. When my study was concluded, I finally had answers for those parents. Not only did we see significant decreases in problem behavior by utilizing AAC strategies, but we saw independent acquisition of the picture exchange condition. But here's the most important part. Using AAC did not have a deleterious effect on the speech development. And that's my take home point. AAC does not hinder speech. But like pieces of a puzzle, professionals from all disciplines need to continue to collaborate to continue to find answers for those families.